Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechaz Yom Adaf Nun Zayin contains four separate discussions. The first one is involved in how we learn the applications of blood on the Parochas, that's in the Heichol, the Kodesh, how we learn that out of the applications of the blood on the Kapores, inside the Kodesh Kedoshim. How can we compare the two? There are technical problems in learning one from the other. Gumar then brings in the testimony of someone who actually saw the Parochas in Rome and how it looked and what remnants of blood were on it. Gumar then discusses what happens if the blood of the par and the sire get mixed together or confused with each other, a number of cases, and what you can do, what you're allowed to do, and what you have to redo. And then the Gemara will finally discuss the uh, subject of actually pouring the blood of the sire and the blood of the chatas together into one kli as part of the next step in the procedure to be applied on the mezbeach, whether they are actually poured together before being put on the mezbeach or after being put on the mezbeach. So let's begin, as we have seen, inside the Kodesh Kedashim, there are four applications of blood. There's a par and a sire, and there's applications up and applications down. Lamaila is achas lamaila, one up, and sheva lamata, seven down. These are four things, two up, two down, one, uh, uh, two for the sar and two for the par. Now, what is actually specified? The Torah mentions all four applications, but it only gives a number for the upper application of the sar, where it says one, and for the lower application of the par, which it, where it says that there are seven. The other numbers, the lower application of the sar is learned that it's also seven, just like the par, through a hekish, and the upper application of the par is learned that it's one time learn that from the Sawyer also through Hekish. Now the Gemara says that all these four blood applications, all these four sprinklings we should say, that are performed inside the Kodesh Kedoshim towards the Kapores are also performed outside the Kodesh Kedoshim towards the Parochas. Now the Gemara has a question. If a rule in Kachim you cannot learn a halacha through a Hekish, if the halacha that you're trying to teach it itself was learned through a Hekish. You cannot do a double Hekish. You can't have a Hekish from A to B, and then that same Malacha go from B to C through another Hekish. So over here, the number of sprinklings in the Sawyer on the down, which is 7, and the upper of the par, which is 1, that was also learned from Hekish. So how could you have another Hekish tell you to teach that, that that should be done not only inside the Kodesh Kedoshim, but also outside the Kodesh Kedoshim? So the Gemara is going to discuss three answers. The Gemara says, answer number one is that we're not teaching the, the actual mitzvah, we're just teaching the number. It's just a detail. The mitzvah of the application that it should be done, we learn because the Torah says so specifically, in the Kodesh Kedoshim, the Torah specifically says all four applications, and therefore I can learn through a Hekish that you have to do all those four outside as well. What's the number? That's a detail in the Kodesh Kedoshim. That's not a problem to learn through a Hekish if it's just a detail. That's not called learning through a Hekish. So the Gemara says there's actually a machlokis about that subject, whether a detail is called learn through a Hekish or not, whether you can learn a detail through a Hekish or not. So this answer works according to the opinion that says that that's not a problem of learning a double Hekish. What about according to the opinion that says that that is a Hekish and you can't learn a double Hekish? So the Gemara says there'll be two more answers. Number one, the Hekish is not the same. The original Hekish was between the two animals, from the par to the sire, from the sire to the par. It's a Hekish linking animals. The second hekish is not a hekish linking animals. It's not telling you that the animals, the application of the blood of the animals done inside, so you have the same, you have other animals outside. It's linking places. The mitzvahs that were done inside the Kodesh Kedoshim are linked to the mitzvahs done outside the Kodesh Kedoshim. It's teaching you that the halachas here are the halachas there, the two are linked. That's not a double hekish. One Hekish is linking the two animals inside the Kodesh Kedoshim, the other Hekish is linking the Kodesh Kedoshim to the Hechel. That's not a problem of a double Hekish. The third answer, the Gemara says, sounds very similar to the first answer. The Machokas are showing them how to explain it. According to the Re, the way it works is as follows. We're not actually learning from the um, Hekish inside the Kodesh Kedoshim to the parallel sprinkling outside the Kodesh Kedoshim. We're actually learning from what's specified in Kodesh Kedoshim to both applications outside the Kodesh Kedoshim. That means as follows. In the Kodesh Kedoshim, the Torah says that the Sawyer's blood should be sprinkled one time up. From that one time up by the Sawyer, we learn that both the Par and the Sawyer outside the Kodesh Kedoshim should be sprinkled one time up. And that's not a Hekish, because we're learning only from the Sawyer where it says specifically. And as far as the lower applications, from the par inside the Kodesh Kedoshim, it says specifically it should be done seven times. From that one statement about the par, we learned that both the par and the sire outside the Kodesh Kedoshim 
in the Heichel, and that's a direct Hekish and not something that is uh, double Hekish at all. Now, the Gemara moves on. The Gemara says we have seen that when one sprinkles the blood on the parochis, we said that he sh- it shouldn't actually touch the parochis, it should just fall to the floor in front of the parochis. The Gemara says, Elizabeth, yes, he says, I saw the parochis in Rome. Even though he was after the time of the destruction of the base of Migdash, he went to Rome and he saw it in Rome. The Gemara elsewhere relates the incident that he went to have a decree in Old, and on his way he met a shade named Ben Tamalian, and the shade said, I'm going to help you. And he went and he possessed the daughter of the emperor, and uh, when Rav Elizabeth Yesi arrived, he was able to chase the shade away, and in gratitude for healing the daughter, they allowed him to take anything from the emperor's treasury, and he took out the paper on which the Xera, the decree against the Jewish people, was written, he tore it up, and the rule in Rome was if the paper's torn up, the decree is torn up, and therefore it was cancelled. Now, when, when he was in the treasury, though, he did see the Kalim of the base of Mikdash, and he saw the Parochus. On the Parochus, he says, it had drops of blood on it, and there's two versions of what he said here. According to the first version, he said he saw it, and it, he could see on it the drops of blood from the Yom Kippur service. And they asked him, how do you know it's from Yom Kippur? Maybe it was from other Kabbanas that have drops that are sprinkled towards the Parochus, like the Par Helem Dover Shel Tibor, uh, where the, the entire Kihila makes a mistake based on the ruling of Sanhedrin. They have to bring a special carbon chatas called a carbon chatas pin, but they also sprinkle blood towards the uh, uh, kapor. Similar thing happens with the C.E. Re Avodazara. If there's a large number of people who do Avodazara, they also have to sprinkle the blood. So maybe it was that blood. So Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Lose, Rabbi Yaisi answered, I could tell by the order. I could tell that it was one up and seven down that it was Yom Kippur blood. According to a different version, he actually said that he saw the blood and he saw that it was from the Par Halam Davar or the Seer Mavavay Dezara, and they asked him, How do you know maybe it's Yom Kippur? And he said, I could tell that it was out of order. Um, but there you see that some drops of blood did get on the Parachas, even though it was supposed to be aimed to fall on the floor. Some got on the Parachas, so that's okay. Okay, the Gemara now moves on. The Gemara says, what happens if the two bloods get mixed together? Now, we know as follows. We know that there has to be a specific order. The Torah says, it says, v'chilo you have to finish doing one sprinkling of blood before you can move on to the next one. The order has to be, and we're again talking here all outside in the Hechel. First, the par one time upwards, then the par seven times downwards. Then you change the container you're holding, then you do first the sire seven times upward, that's the third application, uh, sorry, first the sire one time upward, and then the sire seven times downward. Four in that order. So the Gemara says that uh, what happens if the two are mixed together? The blood of the sire and the power are mixed together into one cleat. So we can now use it for either one we want. And this we don't argue about. Everybody agrees that you could use it. You could have in mind that I'm doing a par sprinkling, even though you're using both buzz. It'll work as a par sprinkling. And if you have in mind I'm doing a sarah sprinkling, it'll work as a sar- sprinkling. So the Gemara first wants to say that Rava said, so he only has to sprinkle one time. He can sprinkle one time, and it'll be for the par and the sire up. And he'll sprinkle seven times down, and it'll be for the par and the sire because it's a mixture of both bloods. So Gemara says that Rabbi Yirmi reacted strongly to this. He said, the foolish Babylonians live in a dark country, so they come up with dark ideas. You can't do it that way, because then what ends up happening is your first sprinkling up was the sprinkling of the sire blood, and that's taking place before the down sprinkling of the par blood. It's out of order. We know it has to be in order. So therefore, you can't do it that way. So now the Gemara says, but what happens if the bloods get mixed together after the first sprinkling for the par was already performed? Meaning you did the par sprinkling, just par blood down, the bloods got mixed. The Gemara says that Rav Papa wanted to say, so now you could just do one sprinkling for the blood of the par, and that works also for the sire, and then afterwards you'll do uh, sprinkling for the blood of the sire for the up part. Meaning as follows, I already did the one up on the par. Now I'm going to do the seven down. I'll use the mixed blood. And it'll work for both the par and the sire. And the only thing that's left to do is the one up on the sire. So the Gemara says, Rubber reacted strongly to that. He says, Tipshoi did Tipshoi. Now this is the fools of the fools. How can you think such a thing is going to work? You end up doing the, the, the sprinkling of the sire down before the sprinkling of the sire up. That's out of order. You can't do it like that. It has to be in the right order. The only thing that you could do is do four separate sprinkling because you have in mind the first two are for the par and the second two are for the uh, sire. Okay, now the Gemara says, what happens if the two bowls were not mixed together but they were confused with each other? That is, the Kohen God, the lost track of which one is which, and even though there's possible to tell, Rashi says he, because of his weakness, was not able to tell. So what's he supposed to do? So the Gemara says he has to do three applications. 
And the first one, he says, if he, he takes one cupful, one miserable, then he takes the other miserable, then he goes back to the first miserable. And he does the up and the down applications for each of them. The first one he takes and he says, if this is the dam of the par, good, I'm doing the dam of the par first. Then he takes the dam of the, then he takes the, the other one and says, if this is a dam of the sar, everything is great. However, if the first one he took was dam of the sar, he says, then this one doesn't count. And then the second one he took was the dam of the par, has to be, that one is now the first one, and he goes back to the other one that he did the first time, and he does it again at the end, the third time, and now it's the dam of the par followed by the dam of the sire, and it's in the right order. Okay, now the Gemara says, what happens if part of the bloods get mixed and part do not get mixed? I mean, now I have three kalim. I have a kli full of dam par, I have a kli of dam sire, and then I have one kli that's a mixture. So the Gemara says, well, it's definitely clear that you're supposed to use the ones that you know what they are. You shouldn't use the mixed one. That's problematic. The question, though, is, is what you do with it afterwards. Generally, the halacha is that whatever remains of the blood, you pour into the side of the mizbech, the lower framework around the mizbech on two sides. You pour the... Uh, there's a hole there, and you pour the extra blood into there. Now, that's only what's called shirayim. And that was in the cup, or that was part of the blood collection, and you didn't use all of it, so you pour the rest into the yisait. Anything, though, that's garbage, anything that's not part of this entire procedure at all, gets poured into the stream that runs through the uh, azara, just like any waste that's left over there. So I'm going to say, so what happens here? I have three cups. I'm going to use the two that are not mixed. That third cup, is that rejected, or is that not rejected? Does that get poured into the stream because it's rejected, or does that get poured into the side because it's left over as it's just not used? So Gemara says we're going to have to explore a machokis, which we've seen, about what happens when you have the blood of any carbon and it's split into two cups, and you use one of them. What do you do with the other cup? Is that called leftovers and you pour it on the mizbeach? In the Yisrael of the Mizbech, or is that called nothing, and you pour it into the stream? So that's a machokis. So Gemara wants to say, so the same machokis should apply here. The Gemara says not necessarily, and the Gemara has two flipped versions of this. First thing where I want to say that the one who says that if you have two cups and you don't use one cup, you pour that into the stream. So where I want to say that's because that cup was rejected. You could have used it and you didn't. It means you pushed it away with your hands so you pour it into the stream. This cup that of the mixed bloods, in our case of Yom Kippur, wasn't rejected. I couldn't use it. It was not actually rejected. Therefore, it doesn't have to be poured into the stream. It's poured into the uh, Yisod. The Gemara has a flipped version of that. The Gemara says no. The one who says that you pour if you have two cups and you don't use one of them, then you pour that one onto the Mizbeach, that's because you could have used it. So it's not really it's not really so uh, rejected. It was usable. This one, which you could not use, even if you wanted to, is more rejected and you should pour into the stream itself. And now the Gemara goes deeper into the Melchokas of what happens when you have two cups. The Gemara quotes the Brisa. Melchokas, Rabbi Elezer, Barab Shimon, and the Tanakama. The Tanakama says, well, everybody agrees to one thing. Everybody agrees that if you have the blood of a Karmachatis, Karmachatis has four applications. If you have the blood in four c- cups, and you take a drop out of each cup and do one application from each cup, so you use a little bit of the blood in each cup, so what's left over is called leftovers, and you pour it in the side of the Mizbech. The Machlokas is what happens when you use, do all four applications out of one cup. What happens with the other three cups? Does that become leftovers and it goes on, on the Mizbech, or is that called leftovers, or, or is that called rejected, and it goes into the uh, stream? This is a who says that it's called uh, leftovers, against the Tanakama, who says that it's called rejected and it goes into the stream. Now, where do they learn it from? So there are two conflicting psukim discussing the blood. One says, Ves koldam yishboch, you should pour all the blood into the Mizbech Yisod. And one says, Ves dama yishboch, you should just pour the blood, but not all of it. So one's including, one's rejecting. So you have some things that are included, some things that are rejected. So according to the Tanakhama, we're including the case that we all agree to. We're including the case where you took some of the blood from each of the four cups. We're rejecting where you only took from one cup and the other cups aren't used at all. According to Belazar, Berbashim, no, that's the case that we're including. What then is the case that we're rejecting? We're rejecting the blood left in the animal's neck. Blood that wasn't collected at all. You don't have to go take that and put it in the sod of the Mizbech. Okay, that concludes this Gemara's discussion. Now we refer back to the procedure of the Kohen Gadol. And as we had said, the next step after he does all the sprinklings on the Parochas, or towards the Parochas, he now purposely mixes the blood of the Sire and the Par together, and he brings it and he puts it on the golden Mizbech 
inside the Hegel. So Gemara says that there's a um, machokis about this, and this would seem to be one of the sides. It seems to be taking sides in the machokis. What's the machokis? Machokis between Rabbi Shai and Rabbi Yainis. And the Gemara first says we don't know which one's which. Machokis is what should you do when the Torah doesn't specify if you do two things. When it says do two things, it says do the blood of the sire and the blood of the par and put it on the mizbech. Does that mean each one separately, or does that mean mix them together? So the Gemara wants to say there uh, that the the uh, the opinion of Rabbi Shai is probably you're supposed to mix them together. We know it's a machlok is Rabbi Shai and Rabbi Nathan, it's probably Rabbi Shai says you mix them together because we find a similar discussion in a totally different. So again, Rabbi Shai there says two things that are mentioned are mixed together. What's that referring to? It's referring to somebody who curses his parents. So the Torah there says he curses his mother and he curses his father. So the question that the Tanaim deal with is, is he liable for cursing each one separately? Meaning even if he does only one of them, the Torah is saying two separate things, cursing the mother and cursing the father. Or is the Torah only referring to where he cursed them both together? So what happens there is Rabbi Shai has a special limud that says that you're liable even if he curses each one separately. That means that had we not had that special limud, just the fact that the Torah says he curses his mother and his father, I would have assumed that that's referring to only both together. So you see there that Rabbi Shai holds whenever the Torah says you do A and B, it means both together. It doesn't mean each one separately. Unless, of course, you have a special uh, Pasuk limud or something that tells you that you do them separately, which is what you have in the case of the cursing of the parents. But over here, though, where you don't have that, he would say that you have to mix the two together. And therefore, our Mishnah would seem to hold like him. Our Mishnah says you mix the two together. So he wants to say, no, that the truth is that Rabbi Yenison really agrees. Rabbi Yenison also holds you mix the two bloods together. What's the reason? Because here we do have a special Pasuk. We have the Pasuk of um, Achas. The Torah says when it describes the application of blood on the Mizbech, it says, al karnos of achas bashana midam achas hakipurim achas bashana. It says to do achas, says to do one, which, which means you should unify it. You should do both together as one. So Gemara says, okay, so you want to say that here Rabbi Anderson agrees. Normally he would say that you do each one separately, but here it says achas, so he agrees. So Gemara says the truth is we have a clear brisa, so not the way brisa clearly says that Rabbi Anderson does not hold the way Rabbi Anderson says you do them separately. And what's the Brysa? The Brysa quotes the Pasuk says, V'lakach midam apar umidam ha-soyer. And um, it says, You should take the blood of the par and the blood of the sire. The word V'lakach seems to say that you should do one taking of both together. And that's therefore a proof that you should do one, you should mix them together first. That's what Rabbi Shai says. Rabbi Yainasin says, No, you do each one Separately, on that, Rabbi Shai asks, "What about the word achas that says you do them together?" So Rabbi Yenison says that just to tell you that you do each one once, you don't do each one twice. So you see clearly that there is such a machlokis, and our Mishnah only holds like Rabbi Shai. Then the Gemara goes and brings another Mishnah, which specifically spells out the Joshua says you learn out of the pasuk velokach that you do each one once, um, and um, uh, and from the word achas it says you do each one. Once that's a Stam Mishnah, which clearly holds like Rabbi Shai, so we have another Stam Mishnah that goes up. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland Shul and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.